This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. In this video, we're going to learn how to write a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And we're also going to put the stipulation that a, b, and c are going to be integers that don't have a common factor greater than one. And we're going to do that if we're given its solution. So we're going to do these two problems. So the first problem here is write a quadratic equation if these are the solutions, 2 thirds and negative 5. Well, to figure out how to do that, let's start with um, this problem where we're solving an equation. What do we do to get the solutions? Then we're going to work backwards. So we have to have an equation to solve it. If you can factor uh, the left-hand side of the equation when it's equal to zero, that's the easiest way to do it. So let's do that. This has got to be a 2x and an x, and then I have to figure out what to put here and here. I think it's 5 and 2, plus 5 and minus 2. Let's see, does that give you the right middle term? 5x minus 4x, yes, is 1x. Gives you the right first term, 2x times x is 2x squared. Gives you the right last term, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. All right, so after factoring, what do we do next? We take the equation and we, I'm sorry, we take each factor and set it equal to 0. Okay. And then we solve for x from here. So first we add or subtract the number from both sides. So we're going to subtract 5 on this side, and the last thing would be to divide by 2. So I'm able to solve for x. The other side's easier. We just add 2 and we're done, right? All right, so for this particular equation, I have solutions, negative 5 halves and 2. Now you could verify that these are the correct solutions by plugging in negative 5 fifths for x, doing the order of operations, making sure the left side and the right side are both equal to 0. And that would check negative 5 halves. And the same thing for 2. 2 is a little bit easier to do in our head. We could say 2 times 2 squared. That's 2 times 4, right, which is 8, hmm? plus 2. So 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. So 2 is an easy one to check. I'll leave negative 5 halves for you. So now the question is this. What if I did not give you the equation? I gave you the solutions. I said the solutions are negative 5 halves and 2. We want to work backwards. So working backwards, if the solution was x equals, uh, if one of the solutions was negative 5 halves, I know the previous equation from that was that x equals that number. Now the trick here is how do you get back to this 2x minus 5? I'm sorry, equals negative 5. Well, it wasn't a fraction originally, right? It was just 2x equals negative 5 before I divided by 2. So to get rid of this fraction, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2. And that's how we get this 2x equals negative 5. If you don't do that, you're going to have to deal with fractions. All right, over here we have x equals 2. No problem, no fractions. All right, so once we get the pro we get an equation without fractions, then we could set it equal to 0. So from here, from this 2x equals negative 5, I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get 2x plus 5 equals 0. From x equals 2, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides to get x minus 2 equals 0. So now you have to think, oh, these must have been the factors, right? So I go up one step, multiply those factors equal to 0, and then I just multiply that out doing the FOIL method, and that's how we could find an equation. Now, there's more than one equation that has this solution. For instance, oops, you know, if I add it, if I uh, multiplied both sides by 3, that would have the same solution, but you would just have larger numbers here, right, for the coefficients. Okay, so now let's do it for the problem we were given. So we're going to go backwards for this problem right here. 
All right, so we're going to try to write a quadratic equation in this form. So how do we start? Here's the solutions, right? Usually we write solutions using the braces. So right before I wrote those solutions, I must have had x equals 2 thirds or x equals negative 5. All right, now it's true that I could just subtract 2 thirds from both sides, but then I'm going to have to deal with fractions. So the way to not deal with fractions is to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So for x equals 2 thirds, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 3, and I get 3x equals 2. Now convince yourself that if you solve this, 3x equals 2, you would get 2 thirds, right? So this is totally valid what I'm doing here. And on the right hand side, hmm, I don't have a problem because I, I don't have fractions. So what, what must have been the step before that? This must have been a factor that equals 0 or an equation that equals 0. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides here. And I'm going to add 5 to both sides over here. So those must have been the two factors. All right, so then we just multiply those together. 3x minus 2 times x plus 5 equals 0. So that gives me 3x squared. Let's see, outer term is plus 15x, inner term is minus 2x, that's plus 13x, minus 10 equals 0, and we did it. We found an equation. Now what you would want to make sure of is that when you plugged in 2 thirds into that equation, sorry, there we go. When you plug 2 thirds in for x, you do want to make sure that you know, it really is a solution, so you would have to get 0 on both sides. I will leave that to you. And then you would also want to make sure that negative 5 is a solution. I think negative 5 is easy to check. Let's do that. Let's plug in negative 5 for x. So I'd have 3 times, what? what's a negative 5 squared? Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Plus 13 times 5. Minus 10 equals 0. So that's the big question of the day. 75. Let's see, 13. Uh, oh, I did this wrong. 13 times negative 5. So that's plus negative 65 minus 10 equals 0. And that's 0. So yes, that's a little confusing. Sorry. 13 times negative 5. All right, so negative 5 is the solution, and then you could go ahead and plug in 2 thirds to make sure that's a solution as well. All right, here's one for you to try. Two fractions. You can do it. So put the video on pause and try finding this quadratic equation. Okay, hopefully you're, you did that instead of just do nothing. And let's do it. So we've got either x equals 1 half or x equals negative 4 fifths, right? That would have been the previous step. Now, we do want to get rid of these fractions. So on the left-hand side, let's multiply by 2, because that's the least common denominator. And on the right-hand side, multiply both sides by 5, because that's the least common denominator. So on the left-hand side, this equation becomes 2x equals 1. The right-hand side, this becomes 5x equals negative 4. Set each of those equal to 0 to see what the factors were. So the very last step here is to multiply those two factors together using the FOIL method or any method you use for multiplying binomials. Okay, 2x times 5x is 10x squared. Outer is plus 8x, inner is minus 5x, that's plus 3x, minus 4 equals 0. And again, the only way you know for sure that it's correct is by plugging in each of these solutions one at a time, making sure that it really is a solution. Just for fun, let's do 1 half for practice. So let's check 
see if x equals 1 half is a solution. We have 10 times a half squared minus 3 times a half minus 4. Is that equal to 0? So this is 10 times a fourth minus 3 halves minus 4. Usually the way I like to check actually is to just simplify each side doing the order of operations. All right, so 4 goes into the 10. Oops, that's a 2. 5 halves minus 3 halves minus 4. 5 halves minus 3 halves, that's 2 halves. Oops, I'm making a mistake here. Oops, I caught it. This was a plus 3x, right? Oops, sorry about that. This was a plus 3x. That's why I saw something was going wrong there. Boy, you got to copy your problem carefully. All right, let's keep going. So we have 5 halves plus 3 halves. That's 8 halves minus 4, which is 4 minus 4, right? So that's going to be 0, yes. So 1 half is the solution. And then you could also check um, that negative 4 fifths is also a solution. All right, so that's one way to do it. Keep going. I'm going to show you some formulas you could use to uh, do this problem. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.